So if you were to, if you were to buy under this perfect blueprint who was put here for our benefit, you might say, well, what about insects? What's their role in this perfect blueprint? Why would God have put insects, sap-sucking insects that destroy the food for the people on the planet and, and necess necessitate the need for us to bring out a whole bunch of chemicals that are poisoning our children to save our crops? How could that be a perfect blueprint? Well, the question to ask is, is there a role in the scheme of things for insects? And the man who best demonstrated that was a man called Professor Phil Callahan in a wonderful groundbreaking book of some 20 years ago uh, called Tuning In to Nature. Uh, and what Phil showed us in this breakthrough book that has only just now been recognised to be correct um, was that, for a start, feelers, insects, aren't, the insects on feelers, feelers on insects, I'll get it right, feelers on insects aren't actually feelers, they're incredibly complex antennae that actually make a TV area look like a little kindergarten toy. They are absurdly complex pieces of apparatus on the front of the insect. And what are they there for? Well, the insect picks up things called pheromones that tell it, it can, where it can mate and who with. But more importantly, Phil discovered that plants emit an infrared radiation. And it's measurable. We can take photographs. We couldn't 20 years ago. Uh, and a healthy plant sends a steady flow of infrared radiation. And the insect flying over picks up that with his antenna and says, no, that's not me and flies on. And an unbalanced plant, most commonly unbalanced by a misuse of nitrogen. Why? Because the nitrate form of nitrogen, which is how most things like urea end up, is always uptaken with water. And if you've got high nitrates, you've got low everything else. You've got low nutrient density, you've got a crap plant. And that high nitrate, low nutrient plant goes zzz, 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 and the plant insect says, yep, that's me. And then he comes to do his role in the scheme of things. He's a garbage collector. You grow garbage, and the garbage collector arrives to take it out. And that's a huge penny-dropping experience for people to say, oh my God, surely that's not how it works. It is how it works. You will never in your life see an exception. If you've got insect pressure in one corner, uh, one paddock, and you don't have it in the other, you will never. I've never met a colleague, never anyone who's walked fields globally who's seen an exception. You will always have lower bricks levels in the insect pressure patch, always, because that's what you created. You created the garbage, and the garbage collectors come to do their job. Now, in my acreage at home, my small acreage before I built the farm, uh, I put my bore down deeper than everyone else. And so some of the neighbours sometimes borrow when, when their shallow bores dry out in these dry conditions. And I had this elderly couple next to me who built some raised beds next to my place so they could access the tap I let them use from my bore that I put a pipe over to their, their fence line. Uh, and they weren't very good vegetable growers. Uh, they would be out there. They liked uh, cabbages and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and so forth. And they'd be out there with their dearest dust trying to control the, the caterpillars. But it was handy for me because I could reach over. I could take a, a really good cabbage from my garden uh, and the leaves would measure 17. And you're measuring nutrient density. That's what you're measuring with these things. And 17 bricks is a very good reading. And I'd measure theirs, which are covered in, still covered in caterpillars that escaped the dearest dusk, uh, and theirs was four. So I'd take the caterpillars off their four and put it in a jar and put a couple of holes in the top and put my cabbage leaves, 17 bricks cabbage leaves in there. And the caterpillars had no choice because they got to eat, to eat those leaves, and by lunchtime, they're all lying dead on the bottom of the jar, and everyone's watched it and seen it happen. Uh, and that's the story. The insect with its antennae would never, uh, everything is about reproduction, you would never lay your eggs on a 17, and they hadn't on mine, because what happens when you consume those high sugars that turns into alcohol in the insect's guts and kills it? And you would never put, choose to put your eggs on that, and that's what your antenna are for, to make the choice of where it's going to be most successful, and that's going to be the garbage. You produce garbage, and that's how it works. And you just got to recognise, oh, should I produce garbage again? I better not do it next time. How can I learn not to produce garbage and call in the garbage collectors? That's the change. Uh, and that's a mindset change for you to realise the science. That's what it is. That's how it works. Uh, and, you know, nitrates is the biggest player in that equation.